Good morning, YouTube family. This is K Steps with Undiluted TV, and I'm just coming to you because I want to give you a real quick update on um, the Luca case. Luca is the young man, the young black man, the, the, the young black teenager that was brutally assaulted by the Broward County sheriffs um, just prior to, <coughs> excuse me, the um, Easter weekend. And I just want to bring you an update and a little bit more information that I found out as far as that case is concerned. Um, it's still under investigation. The officer that is seen pounding his head in the, in, in, into the concrete um, right after the incident occurred, his gun, he, he, he had to turn over his gun and his badge until the investigation is over. Um, and we already knew that because that was that was in the the previous video that we did on this um but i want to bring you this update as far as what the mayor of tamara is saying and what a few of the actual school board members and other officials are saying about this whole incident <sighs> This is what Mayor Mark B Bogan, and his last name is B-O-G-E-N, in case you want to go to the, to the Twitter and look up, you know, some of the things that he's been saying about this whole case, because he's had a lot to say um, since all of this came out. And this is what, this is one of his tweets. This was April the 19th when he tweeted this. Mayor Mark Bogan, and he is a, a white gentleman. The behavior of these BOS, meaning uh, Broward Sheriff's Officer uh, deputies, is outrageous and, un and unacceptable. The officer who jumped the student, punched, and banged his head should be fired. I have a problem with the deputy who threw him to the ground after he pepper sprayed him. He could easily, he could have easily arrested him after the spray. And that's exactly how I feel about this. You know, I've had people in my comments, and I don't know whether they're black or whether they're white, but I've had people in my comments that have actually come out and said that one, one person actually commented and said the little bastard got what he deserved. Those are the kind of comments that I have seen. And, and, and I don't know whether they watched the video or not, but how could you possibly watch this video and feel like a child that has not done anything? Because remember, this child, Luca, the one in the red tank top, the one whose head was banged into the pavement was not a part of the problem. The child that was a part of the problem, the teenager that was a part of the problem was already laying on the ground arrested. All Luca did was reach down to pick up the guy's cell phone to keep it from getting trampled on. That's all he did. He was not a part of the problem. He was not a part of the fight. He just reached down to pick up the cell phone. And if you read the articles where this 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 officer that that that's that's punching the kid and banging his head into the concrete, if you read his account of what happens, he says that the guy's cell phone flew out of his pocket, flew past him and behind him, and he saw the guy with the, the, the child with the red tank top pick up the cell phone. And that's it. That's all he did was pick up the cell phone. He picked up the cell phone. An officer reached out to push his head. He stood up. I think he may have said something to the officer, maybe something to the effect of, I was just picking up the phone or whatever. The officer then proceeded to pepper spray him. After he pepper sprayed the child, you can clearly see the child running away from the officer. He was pepper sprayed at that time. He was in pain. It was after he was pepper sprayed and moving away from the officers, moving away from the crowd, moving away from the officers, all of that, and going what it looked like he was going around a vehicle. That's when the officer that pepper sprayed him grabbed him by his back and slung him to the ground. 
After he slung him to the ground, this other one, Krekovich, jumped on his back, pounded his head twice into the cement, and then punched him. He wasn't resisting arrest. Why would he be a resisting arrest when he wasn't even a part of the arrest? He was never a part of the arrest. All he simply did was pick up a cell phone. And from picking up a cell phone, which I didn't know that picking up a cell phone was a crime in the United States. All he did was pick up the cell phone. He picked up the cell phone. You can see the officer reach out towards him after he picked up the cell phone. He stood up. It looked like he may have said something to the officer. I'm not sure. And then he was pepper sprayed. When he was pepper sprayed, both of his hands were at his side when he was pepper sprayed. So there was no resisting arrest or anything like that because he wasn't under arrest. All he did was pick up a cell phone. He wasn't even a part of the reason why the officers were there in the first place. The young man who was trespassing had already been arrested and was laying on the ground. And it was this young man whose cell phone flew out of his pocket that the young man with the red tank top was picking up the guy's cell phone. But even if he had been a part of the situation or a part of the problem or whatever. Once he was pepper sprayed, he was disabled. He was disabled. He was running away from the pepper spray, away from the cop. And that's when the cop that pepper sprayed him, grabbed him by his back or his book bag or whatever, because he still had his book bag on his back, slung him to the ground. And then the other officer jumped on his back, banged his head twice into the concrete and punched him. And that is the reason why you even have the mayor saying it was outrageous and unexpected. The, the behavior of these BSO deputies is outrageous and unacceptable. The officer who jumped the student, punched and banged his head should be fired. I have a problem with the deputy who threw him to the ground after he pepper sprayed him. He could have easily arrested him after the spray. So if there was any reason that you felt like you needed to arrest him, once you had pepper sprayed him, that was it. Arrest him. He, he, what else can he do? He can't do nothing but try to run. And he blind. He can't see because he's been pepper sprayed. So that disabled him. Then they want to give this bogus story about they were in fear that they might be struck because they were surrounded and all that. Okay, well, you were surrounded by the same amount of kids when you arrested the other guy that's laying there on the ground handcuffed. You weren't afraid then. And if you look at the video, most of what's around them is girls. The girls are the ones that are doing the screaming. The girls are the ones that are doing the talking. And they don't start doing all of that until after Luca is thrown to the ground and his head is banged into the concrete. That's when they start screaming. And I'm sorry, but if police officers are that afraid that they can't do their jobs and they can't control themselves and they can't control their emotions, then they don't need to be pol police officers. Because the child with the red tank top just picking up the phone should never have even been approached. If all he was doing was picking up a cell phone, he should never have been approached. There was no reason for him to be pepper sprayed. He was just standing there with his hands down by his side.
And the mayor, Mark Bogan, goes on to say some other stuff. There are other tweets where he goes on to say some other stuff, where he goes on and talks about the attorney general. I mean, that the the the, uh, the state attorney all that needs to be brought into this. And, you know, and there needs to be a full blown investigation. He goes on to say a whole he tweets a whole lot of stuff about this. And he really believes that this needs to be investigated and that charges actually need to be brought up against this officer that punched this child and banged his head into that concrete. Now, this is the mayor talking. And again, he's a white man. Okay, but there's also... As I said, several other officials, school board members and, and other officials who, who, are, who are really upset about this, <laughs> and they've got a lot to say. Yeah, the mayor of Broward County called for the firing of the deputy seen in the video. The behavior of these Broward Sheriff, Sheriff's officers Sheriff's, Sheriff office deputies was outrageous and un, un, unacceptable. Now, there's another couple of ladies that had some stuff to say. And I want to bring up what they had to say. One of them was um, a school board member by the name of Rosalind Osgood. Let me make sure that I get to the right article because there's a couple of articles on this one. So that I can bring out exactly what these officials had to say. This is the only total. Okay, here it is. Um, school board member Rosalind Osgood took to Twitter on Friday morning to contact the sheriff's office to demand removal of these officers. School board member, member Lori Alhadef, whose district includes Terravella, said she too was alarmed by the deputy's actions. I'm disappointed, saddened, and shocked by the most recent actions taken by BSO, she said. The aggressive and excessive force shown was unnecessary and excessive. Sensitivity training and culture awareness for, pop, for police is key. Now, this came from the 10th grader who actually <coughs> recorded the video that, that the, the, the video that most of us have seen, although there must have been two because there were two separate angles. You had one angle that actually showed the pepper spraying, and then you had another angle where you didn't see the pepper spraying. All you heard was the kids, you know, all of a sudden get loud and start rushing in, in another direction, and then you saw... Luca being thrown, and then you saw the officer getting on top of him. It's just crazy, said the boy who shot the video. I see if I didn't want it to play, it would play. It was just crazy, said the boy who shot the video, whose mother did not want his name to be published. 
It was very overboard. Punching him and slamming his head on the ground wasn't necessary. This is what Dr. Rosalind Osgood, who is the school board member, had to say. This is unacceptable. The young man clearly had his hand by his side when he was attacked by these officers. Please contact Brow Sh at Brow Broward Sheriff to demand removal of these officers. That's what she and, and there's a lot. Her uh, uh, again is Dr. Rosalind Osgood at Reverend Oz, and this is what she tweeted. And there are, there are quite a few tweets on her Twitter as well about this situation. But this is what I wanted to point out. This is something that I wanted to point out. Now, as I said, the mayor, the mayor Mark Bogan, is a white gentleman. And as I said, he's called for the state attorney, for the state's attorney and, you know, and all kinds of investigations to be opened up behind this. He's called for charges to be pressed against this officer. He, you know, he's called for these folks to be fired. You know, he's called for all of this. But in all of the tweets that you see on his Twitter that he did, nobody's calling him a racist. Nobody has called him a racist. Nobody has said anything negative. Nobody has tweeted anything negative. However, Dr. Rosalind Osgood, the school board member, is a black woman. She's a black woman. And she has called for the man to be charged with child abuse. And, you know, and she's called for them for them to be fired and for investigations to be done and all of that. However, if you go on her Twitter and you look at all the tweets, you will see all the instances of where she's being called a racist. Yes. She's being called a racist. She's being called a racist because she's standing up. Because she's speaking out. Because she's not willing to just sit back and watch another black child be brutalized. Because it's going on everywhere in the schools. It's going on in the schools. The resource officers are, are, are snatching up these kids and slamming them. I mean, it, you know, teachers are, 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 are pulling their hair and, 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 and slapping them all up, upside the head. It's just all kinds of stuff going on. And because she's speaking out against these white sheriff's deputies. And because she's speaking out against the brutality. If you go on her Twitter, you will see instance after instance of her being called a racist against white people. Now, like I said, the mayor is a white gentleman and he's speaking out. He's being very vocal. He's not backing down. He's not stepping down. But not only, but in not one instance is he being called racist. But she's a black woman. She's speaking out. She's not saying as much as he is. I mean, for day one, he's been calling for 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 folks to be uh, uh, fired and 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 investigated and all of that. But she's being called over and over again on her Twitter. She's being called a racist. You know, just, you know, it, it, you, people are just saying all kinds of things about her that they're trying to throw all kinds of stuff up in her face. You know, her, people are, are bringing in stuff about her family, the whole nine yards. All because she's a black woman defending a black child against obvious police brutality against obvious excessive unnecessary force and that's just something that i just wanted to point out i just wanted to point out just how racist this country still is when i've got people that would actually come in my comments after seeing this and say something like the little bastard got what he deserved I had one per one person comment and say something like, well, that wasn't that bad. What wasn't that bad? So you deserve to, to, to not only be pepper sprayed, 
then to be slammed to the ground. Once you're pepper sprayed and slammed to the ground, then you deserve for somebody to put somebody to climb on top of you. Forcibly blank bang your head into concrete. And then punch you on the side of the same head that on the same side that you just got pepper sprayed on. Then arrest you like you actually committed a crime. And then lie and say that you were resisting arrest and you assaulted a police officer. When there's a video that clearly shows that all you did, this is getting on my nerves, that all you did was pick up a cell phone. That's all you did. You didn't raise your hands. You didn't touch anybody. When the police officer pepper sprayed you, you ran in the opposite direction. You ran away from the police officer and away from the pepper spray. When he pepper sprayed you, both your hands were by your side. But you deserve what you got. You deserved to have your ba head banged into concrete and to be punched in the head and then to be arrested and then to be charged like you did something. It just goes to show just how racist this country still is and will always be. It just goes to show that there is no justice in the United States for black folks, especially not for black men. Just how racist it is when the white mayor can demand action. The white mayor can demand that these people be investigated and that folks be charged and nobody says anything. But when a black school board member does the same thing, then all of a sudden white folks want to come out and call her racist. White folks want to come out and attack her and attack her for standing up for what's right. And if you don't believe me, I've just given you their names. Mayor Mark Bergen, Bogan, B-O-G-N-E. Mayor Mark, B-O-N-G-B-O-G-N-E. Mayor B Mark Bogan. Go on Twitter and look it up yourself. Dr. Rosalind Osgood at Reverend Ross. And you will see what I'm talking about. But every time a situation like this happens, the first thing and, 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 and anybody black opens up and says anything about it or anybody black calls it for what it is, then we're using the race card or we're trying to make everybody racist or, you know, we're trying to start a race war or whatever. When even a white FBI director has gone before Congress and said that the pervasive, persistent actions of white supremacy and white nationalism, racism, racism is the baby of white supremacy, is a, that, that, that white supremacy is a pervasive persistent threat to the United States of America. Now that's what a white man told Congress just a couple of weeks ago. But we're supposed to believe that white supremacy and racism no longer exists when we are the targets of it every day. When black folk are the targets of it every single day. So we know exactly what Christopher Ray is talking about. 
because we've lived it in this country for 400 and some years. So we know exactly what he's talking about. But the fact that whether you be white, whether you be black, whether you be pink, whether you be red, yellow, or green, the fact that you can actually come and comment in a comment section and try to make us think that we're crazy, that we're the ones that's causing the problems, that we're the ones that won't let racism die, that we're the ones that are using the race card and race baiting, when your own white father, Christopher Ray, director of the FBI, goes before Congress and tells you that white, white supremacy has become a pervasive, persistent threat in the United States of America. And to prove that, just, a, just what, maybe a week and a half after he said it, we have this right here. But in Parkland, just a couple of weeks ago, a 19-year-old white student walked into a school and murdered 17 of his classmates. 17. I think they said he had a AK-15. He had some kind of assault rifle. And he was arrested with no incident. Not a scratch on him. The police were gentle and kind with him. Just like they were with Dylan Roof. After Dylan Roof had went in and killed nine innocent people nine innocent black people in a church. And the police gently walked him out of the house, gently put him in the back of the car, and then stopped by Burger King and got him some food before they took him to the police department. But a 15-year-old black child picks up a cell phone and has to be brutalized. And I got some ignorant somebody in my comments talking about the little bastard. That's what he said. The little bastard got what he deserved. The white mayor. The white mayor can call for all kind of action to be taken. Nobody has anything to say. A black school board member calls for action to be taken and all of a sudden she's a racist. Like it or not, believe it or not, it is what it is. And you know what it is? It's white supremacy and racism. I'll keep y'all posted. Have a good morning.